Um, so there's this uh, poem that we learn in uh, America in the schools in English classes by Robert Frost. It's called The Road Not Taken. Um, it's not that. I don't remember. That was, I didn't remember how it started. But it's, uh, there's two roads in a yellow wood. And uh, sorry that I could be only one traveler and, and not take both roads. Long there I stood and uh, I looked down one road and saw how far down it went, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm paraphrasing here at this point. Um, but the, the idea is that there's lots of choices you can make in life and the road splits and you could choose to uncross your legs in an opportune time or something like that. Um, but basically, um, I was thinking about my journey uh, towards stand-up comedy and I thought of this poem because my journey to stand-up comedy actually started by me being a pantomime. I started training in my, you know, mime like being trapped in a box and doing things with your body. That's how I got started. Um, so, you know, not really using your voice, even though I was always told, oh, Jim, you have a great voice for radio. And, uh, and actually, I grew up listening to George Carlin. He used to fall asleep to his tapes all along. And I loved stand-up comedy, but I fell more in love with, uh, with physical comedy and being able to do things with my body and, uh, and control. So I studied professionally to be uh, a pantomime. I took theater classes, and I went to school for that. And that's how I uh, discovered Poland. I came here for a pantomime festival in the year 2000. I moved to Chicago and got my first job. That's me riding my giant red rocket into space. Uh, this is with Kaput Clown Theater in Chicago. It was a fusion of pantomime and European clown and Native American clowning. Um, but we didn't talk. The most we said was, uh, which became really useful when uh, I came to Poland and I didn't speak any Polish, so I could be like, um, and it was also uh, my physical skills and, and, and being able to communicate without words uh, was really useful to me because uh, my road on pantomime introduced me to my uh, Polish wife, who was a Polish pantomime actress. We met at a, a, a pantomime school in the States. We lived there for a few years and we, uh, we decided to move to Poland to start our family and to have a career and we formed... Uh, that's not that. I hate PowerPoint. Um, we formed a, a physical comedy duo called Liquid Mime, uh, which is also sound effects and pantomime and uh, beatboxing and breakdancing and movement. And we took it to Paca here in Krakow and won it a couple of times. And we went to other festivals and I was on Mom Talent and I was on television. And it was amazing. It had all of this success and it was, it was great. Um, but while I was living in Poland and performing physical comedy and silent comedy, um, I was having these crazy observations that you had as foreigner in another country, right? Like you, when you move to another place, you kind of get fresh eyes and you see everything different. And I felt like my kids, because when my kids were young, they would always say, Daddy, why, why, Lachego, why, why, why? And I also would have lots of questions. Why? Like, why in Poland do you guys not have door handles on the outside of your balcony doors? That's, that's a door. That's a door. And there's no door handle on the outside. And... There's another one, and there's no door handle on the outside. And there's another one, and there's no door handle on the outside. I think you guys get the point. No door handle. No door handle. No door handle. Oh, that's the, that's, that's the closest thing I've found to a door handle is like, here, okay, here's the thing with, with Polish language. I'm learning the Polish language, right? And the word for door in Polish is drzwi, and it's all the time plural. Like, you don't say in Polish, jeden drzwa. You don't say jeden drzwo. You say drzwi, all the time drzwi. But somehow, when they were designing the language and these doors, they forgot that doors have two sides. It's always plural, right? So I ask people all the time, why do you only have one door handle on your balcony doors? And no one could answer my question. And I started to realize that, yeah, Polish people don't need that second door handle because everybody thinks like MacGyver. And they're like, oh, just, no, you, look, you just take a shoelace and you tie it to the thing and then you put it on the hook and on the flower plot and the door is closed. Just because I'm kiente. And I'm like, Shatsun dla kombinovac. That's okay, great. But that's, that's not the reason why. And no one could tell me why. Um, and I was like, why? My friend's like, mm, uh, it's safety. It's because of safety, because, you know, with the door handle on the outside, anybody could just walk into my sixth floor flat. So <laughs> I was convinced for the first few years that I lived in Poland that Poland had a giant problem with ninjas. 
so you have all these crazy questions. But the other thing I started to, uh, to observe, and I you know, developed all these things, um, and, and, and I had these ideas that I couldn't communicate through physical comedy. And also at the time, I noticed in Poland that stand-up comedy was coming across the ocean, and Polish people were starting to do stand-up in, uh, in Polish, and the whole uh, traditional cabaret was uh, declining, and stand-up was increasing and going higher, and everyone started to do it. And as I was observing stand-up comedy, I also started to make other observations about things I didn't know were possible, things that in the States I didn't know could be that way. Like, out here, I didn't know it was possible that I could go into a store, and I could take something off the shelf, and the price that was written on the thing is actually how much the thing costs. Which I know no one has any idea what I'm talking about right now, but that's another door handle. That's, that's not, this is, this is diapers for $20, but when you go to the checkout counter, they ask for $21.20, because tax. But we like to keep that a secret until the very last second just to kind of make it like a game show, like a big surprise, like, how much is it going to cost? Oh, more than I have. <laughs> so when I first came here and I went into a, I went into a Jabka, right, and I went to buy a bottle of beer, and on the bottle it was written, uh, one zwote, 99 grosh, and I was like, okay, and I took it up to the cash register, and the lady asked me for zwote, 99 grosh, and I was like, yeah, that's the price, but how much does it cost? And then she looked at me really strange, and she was like, no, it's well, it's 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. And I was like, tak, to jest tej cena, ale ile kosztuje? No, kosztuje z złote 99 grosz. Nie, to jest tej ceny. Ile kosztuje? Ile kosztuje? She's like, te kosztuje tej ceny. Tej ceny jest ile kosztuje. It costs the price. The price is how much it costs. And I was like, son of a bitch, you can do that? I'm moving to Poland. This place is amazing. I had these ideas and I really wanted to share them. And I wanted to share them, so I started, I organized my first stand-up comedy show. I wrote out all these ideas and I got them in a format and, and I got a space, a, a club in Wrocław and I did a show and people came. So I did another show and people came and then I did a show the next month and people came and then I did two shows and I started organizing open mics. And then I had friends in Krakow that said, hey Jim, come to Krakow and do some comedy in Krakow. So I went to Krakow and then I found people in Warsaw that were doing stand-up comedy. And I did stand-up comedy in Warsaw and I went to Guy. So I started started doing stand-up in English for all the expats all across Poland and organizing open mics so other people could do stand-up comedy. And the other thing, um, speaking about being a foreigner, maybe you guys know this already, but when you move to another country, another culture that you're not familiar with, you, you don't know what's not possible. Like, you don't have those cultural blocks. So, like, I would meet people and tell them that, I, you know, I'm interested in stand-up comedy. And they're like, oh, stand-up comedy, yeah, that, that would never work in Poland. That would, that would, that would never work, you know, because no one really comes out and no one really understands English. And I was like, um, I'm already doing it. And they're like, how? It's not possible. Like, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. You can do these things. I didn't know it was possible. So, I, yeah, I went around and I started spreading live comedy in English because, you know, anybody can watch stand-up comedy on YouTube. Anybody can watch it on, on the television. But it's something different about being in a room full of people. And plus, I'm a live performer. So it was really in my self-interest to get people in front of me to be able to, to say this to. And, you know, there's really something infectious about laughter. When one person starts laughing, somebody else starts laughing too. And now this lady's smiling and this guy's looking at my slab. But he'll be smiling in a second. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. And then, you know, it starts to be this really, like, it's kind of like a disease, but a really positive disease that starts spreading around and spreading around, and people love it a lot, and it's great. And, and, and we all know that uh, there's a lot of health benefits to, uh, to laughter, like all these, you know, the, it lowers your blood pressure, uh, it relaxes you, releases endorphins, and, and all these wonderful things that we all kind of had a sense that they're true, but actually, more and more, uh, actual science is coming out that these things are being confirmed through rigid scientific studies, and it's true. And the health benefits of laughter is one of the things that really uh, interested me and is really connected to something else that I do with my time, and that's uh, being a medical clown with an organization called Czerwone uh, It's only been two, three years in existence in Poland, but it's under the umbrella of Red Noses International, uh, which is based out of Austria. They have programs in 11 other European countries, and the idea is, 
is that um, uh, trained professional actors are trained in bedside manner and medical procedures, and we go and we work with the patients and with the staff and with the parents, and we try to raise the, uh, the, the, the energy of the room and relieve tension, and also uh, it's a great uh, pain relief tool as well. Like I had this experience a couple of weeks ago when I was working in the hospital. Um, we got uh, information from the nurses, because we always check in with the nurses first and find out who could really use a visit, and they're like, oh, there's this little boy in room uh, 102, and uh, we think he could really use a visit. So I went with my partner. We always play in pairs. We play in pairs. And uh, we go into the room, and the boy sees us, and he's already hunched over in pain because he you know, he's, he's in pain. And, and, and he, said the, he said this crazy thing. He's like, I don't have time for clowns. <laughs> so quick thinking, I thought, oh, my clown's name is Dr. Prosha, Dr. Please. So I took this, and I said, uh, yeah, you know what? You're right, you're right, I'm sorry, I didn't make a reservation. You're right, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know what, I'm gonna leave right now, you know, I'm just gonna leave right now, I'm very, very sorry. I'm, actually, I'm leaving right now and I will not disturb you anymore, I will not disturb you, and, and I'm very sorry for disturbing you before and I'm not gonna leave you, and I'm going, la, 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 la. and my, uh, my partner, who's my boss, my boss takes me by the shoulder and throws me out of the room, and we wait a couple of seconds. And then I come back in, I'm just like, yes, just wanted to let you know that I'm walking to the elevator right now. I shall not disturb you anymore. I'll be leaving you alone. I just I get yanked out again, I get yanked out again. And every time I come back, I see the boys. Like, and he starts waiting for me to come back. He starts waiting for me to come back. And finally, after like the fourth or fifth time, he's like, ah! totally forgot about all the incredible pain he's in, which like, well, I'm not saying that that's a cure, but it definitely helps in that moment to leave the, relieve the stress. And that's one of the amazing things about that job. I love my job because you can see the effects right there, right? Like you can see the power and, and, and the benefits and it's a super rewarding job. Um, having laughter as your job is really rewarding, but there's, there's this one hazard to, um, uh, making laughter your profession is that laughter can also be like a drug and if you're not careful you can get addicted to this drug and if your job is making other people laugh that's that's the drug and if you're not careful that you can stop laughing yourself and uh, there's this uh, classic story myth legend whatever you want to call it uh, about this uh, guy he's real depressed and he goes to the psychologist and he's like doctor I'm so sad I'm so sad no matter what I do I'm just so depressed and the doctor says, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, come with me here to the window. Come with me to the window. And he takes him to the window and he says, you see out there, do you see that tent? In that tent is the most famous, most funniest clown in the world. Go see him and he should relieve all of your ills. He's going to make you laugh and you're going to feel fantastic. And instead of being inspired by this, the man just sits there with the most saddest look on his face and he goes, doctor, I'm that clown. And a lot of people will tell you that this is based on a true story. Oh, it's based on Grok, it's based on Grimaldi. Really, it could be based on uh, many uh, different comedians because it really is such a true thing. Just recently, we lost uh, one of my favorite uh, comedians growing up, Robin Williams, no relation, sadly. Um, but I, I saw him on television. I loved all of his movies. He was a giant inspiration for me. And he made millions of people laugh all across the world, um, but he finally, succumb to his own uh, depression and his own problems. And in my journey too, um, I kind of reached a point recently and, 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 and thinking about this that, um, you know, I, I, I've been living my dream for the last however many years, you know, touring across Poland, doing shows and traveling and making people laugh and being famous and it's amazing. But um, I, I started to ignore the things that were important to me, right? Like me sitting at home and working and working, and my kids would come in and be like, Daddy, look what I can do, look what I can do. I'd be like, get out of here, I gotta finish this joke. I gotta do something funny, I gotta make this joke. Or they'd be like, can you take me to school? I'm like, no, I have to go to the hospital and make the sick kids laugh. And I didn't get along with my wife, we were having some problems and I had some stress problems. Eventually my body kind of gave out on me, I had a pinched nerve and I lost the feeling in my hands and I started smoking again, which is great when you work in the hospital and are trying to, you know, say, you should, have, you should live healthier, be healthier, but I was like, you know, feeling really good about myself. And eventually around Easter time, just this year, I kind of went crazy. I lost my mind and I was like, told my family, I'm like, I can't spend Easter with you guys this year. I'm going to the mountains. And I went to the mountains for three days and I took no electronics and no tobacco and no alcohol and nothing. And I went and I sat and I walked in the forest and I ate and I slept and I wrote and I thought about myself. And I thought again about that poem. I thought about the poem 
not that poem. That's not the poem. It's this about the two roads, right? Because the end of the Robert Frost poem is, and I took the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. And I always used to think that that meant, like, follow your dreams and take the road less traveled because that's the one that they aren't expecting, and that's where success lies. And, and that's really, you know, whoa, it's amazing. At least I'm following my dreams. But I really thought about it. I'm like, if I'm living my dream, why the hell am I so tired? Why am I so miserable if I'm living my dream? And I realized it's because I lost touch with myself and I wasn't taking care of myself. And then I thought of that thing you see in the airplane where they tell you if the masks come down, put yours on first before you put it on your kid because the only way that you can help somebody else is if you take care of yourself first. So I started to make some life changes. I totally slowed down my tempo of work, quit smoking again. It's been one and a half months. Tobacco free. Thank you, one person, for applauding. I guess the rest of you guys are smokers. Sorry. No pressure. No pressure. Um, I recently took a job near my house in Wrocław. Uh, I started spending more time with my kids. I started slowing down. My kids are right here. You can meet them after, the, after my talk. They have words they would like to chat about on their placard. Yeah, Aniela and Lydia. And really, um, the last show I did in Wrocław last week has been... My, my favorite show in the last year because I actually wanted to be on stage again and I started to enjoy it one more time because I started taking care of myself. So we're supposed to end these TEDx talks with a call to action and my call to action to you is here in, Kaz in Kazimierz, in Poland in general, in the world, um, support your local comedians and support local comedy and spread laughter because it really is helpful. But just like any medication, uh, use appropriate dosage and, you know, always have your medication on you. Thank you so much.